guys, it's Nathan Ryan here. You remember your first steps as a baby, right? A lot of falling over, crying, and falling over, but eventually you get those new shoes and you're running a marathon. In gaming terms, for me, that was the GameCube. This was my very first video game console. Here, let me show you. What? Sadly, I don't have it anymore. Because when I got the Wii, and my mom found out that GameCube games are backwards compatible with the Wii, she got rid of the hexahedron. So if anyone asked to see my very first video game console, that'll be an awkward story to tell. That's besides the point. Let's compare the GameCube, for me, to your first steps as a baby. Some can be an NHL Hits 2002, Winnie the Pooh's Rumbly Tumbly Adventure, or even Doors Journey Through the Purple Planet. But after that, we. These are all the GameCube games I own. Very small and weird, but hey, at least I have more of these in my packing game collection. These are all I have and all I've ever had. This is my first ever home console, so you think that I have at least one quality game to play, like Super Mario Sunshine, Kirby Air Ride, or Sonic Mega Collection. But Winnie the Pooh though. These games aren't the greatest, not what you'd expect a childhood GameCube collection to look like. But these do bring back childhood memories. So just for the funsies, I'm going to discuss each of these games to get a deeper look on what games raised me. Let's start this off simple with the two generic sports games I own, NHL Hits 2002 and MVP Baseball 2004. I'm not going to talk a lot about these as I do tend to talk about sports games on a January 29th, 2021, so think of this as a brief overview of these games. In other words, don't base your choice to buy these off me. NHL Hits 2002 was released by Midway on GameCube, Xbox, and PlayStation 2 on September 24th, 2001. While MVP Baseball 2004 was released by EA on GameCube, Xbox, PlayStation 2, and Windows on March 9th, 2004. These are just your typical generic sports games. NHL Hits 2002 has all the usual things found in an NHL game. A regular exhibition game, custom teams, and copyrighted menu music. The only difference is that there's an opening with clips of actual hockey games and that the players are probably now in their late 50s. The gameplay isn't that different. It's a sports game. The same applies for MVP Baseball 2004, just a generic baseball game. You can play the good old game of baseball, I'm assuming some sort of custom team, more copyrighted menu music, and it does have an opening cutscene like the last one, but this time with actual gameplay footage. So yeah, there isn't really anything interesting with these two. For the third time, they're just generic sports games. Okay, that's it. I don't know how I feel about talking about sports games for 9 plus minutes this year alone. So, are you ready to see some childhood trauma? RATS! Magical Mirror starring Mickey Mouse was released solely on the GameCube on August 9th, 2002. It featured everyone's favorite corporate company character, Chuck E. Cheese. This is a 3D point and click game because when the people who made this game made this game, they thought, what better genre for a boy rap boy genius than a point and click game? And yeah, who made this game anyways? Well looky here, Capcom teamed up with Disney Interactive Studios to make this game. Disney Interactive made most of all the Disney games in existence before closing down in 2016. They teamed up with Squaresoft, now Square Enix, to make Kingdom Hearts, so they went from that to... Well, I mean, they have one thing in common. Magical Mirror starring Mickey Mouse features my man Stuart Little taking a good old 4.04pm snooze until a random ghost named... <coughs> Luggage just comes out of his mirror, which prompts Jerry to... <coughs> Listen to what the Ancient One told him last week. After, for some reason, listening to Luggage when he told him to get into the mirror, he follows him in. <laughs> which is a lot more rubbery than you'd think. After going through, we end up in a room with doors. Because when I stand in front of my mirror, that's what I think is behind it. I know what you're hiding! After you have a chase with yourself twice, collect a star, and go through one last door. Should I call the police? These 
tricks pop up a lot during this game. The name makes sense because I have no idea what these are and they completely bamboozled me. Is it supposed to be tricking you into doing something you shouldn't? Is it telling you one thing but it really means another thing? Did I call the police after? But if you choose the thumbs down option, it does nothing. And you have to pick the thumbs up option. And... I'm calling the police. That's the last straw. Whoa! Seven one, what's your emergency? Nice. We then use the key to get to the door, and we finally see the meaning of the title: the magical mirror, which does in fact star our buddy old pal Remy. As you walk up to it, lo and behold, luggage comes out of it, does a lightning thing, and the mirror breaks into many pieces. So now, in order to get home, Itchy must walk around this mansion of some sorts to collect the pieces and rebuild the mirror. The rest of the game is a lot of the same as we just did. Open doors, find keys, open doors with keys, collect stars, get tricked, shrink down and unplug a TV, it's just a normal day in the life of Peter Pettigrew. There's not much else to say about this game besides my childhood experience with it. I never would get far into it, because to me as a little tyke, it was kind of eerie. It was kind of a scary looking game, and being played on a dim CRT TV made it way scarier, along with luggage causing a rumble in the GameCube controller. I need to definitely try to finish this game one day to see if my maturity will help me experience a game that actually doesn't seem that bad. Alright, that's it. I'm getting away from this trauma. Let's move on to a game that didn't scare me as a kid that I have a lot more to say about. It's funny the things that this game and the last game have in common. They're both Disney games, they both feature an animal of some sort. Okay, there's one difference. One animal can eat the other. Second to last here is the game that I spent the second most amount of time with. Winnie the Pooh's Rumbly Tumbly Adventure. Released for the GameCube, PlayStation 2, and Game Boy Advance on February 8th, 2005. This is a 3D walking around game. It's not a platformer, that's for sure. They're all essentially the same game. The GameCube and PS2 version are the exact same, and the GBA version is as well, just on the GBA. This is the second most nostalgic and memorable game that I played on the GameCube as a kid. So let's see what I was doing with here. Oh, look who's back. So again, Disney Interactive went from making anime key game to less keys. So the game opens up with a CGI cutscene that definitely screams early to mid 2000s. The basic plot or lore in this game is that while Winnie the Pooh and Christopher Robin are having a walk, Pooh has his daily <sighs> to solve world hunger. Christopher Robin suggests to Pooh that he needs to think about something else to get off his mind. Since he doesn't know what to think about, again, Christopher suggests that he should think about his favorite times. So now Pooh thinks, thinks, and thinks, and my favorite times are always the friendliest times, and birthday parties are very friendly indeed. Trust me, in the current state of the world, birthdays are not the friendliest times, they're the eest times. Whoa. This sends Pooh off to look at his birthday scrapbook to remember his friend's past birthdays. Then, we are shoved into the game. We walk up to Gopher to create a new file, and then we are just put into the main hub world. We have three modes to choose from here. Adventure, Junior Mode, and Multiplayer Minigames. Let's start off with Adventure Mode, the core of this game. We look into the scrapbook, and we get to choose one of the five birthdays to relive. The main premise of these is walking around the 100 acre wood and doing a number of things to eventually see one of the characters on their birthday. These involve helping out other characters, moving blocks to create openings, or finding objects to get around. There are a couple things that get in your way from doing this though. The collectible items in this game are honeypots. These are found in glowing stumps, rocks, logs, etc. And if you hump them, honeypots come out. Each has 15 each, and you have a limited amount of time to snag all of them. If you don't get them in the amount of time given, you have to go back punch it or hump it again, and collect the rest. The only use for these things are to get past bumblebees blocking a path or item. 
these bees are really greedy. And if you don't give them the right amount of honey pots, if this is what it's like to have children, don't sign me up. Once you give them the correct amount of honey pots, they leave. Another thing that gets in the way of Bonafetta are the heffalumps and woozles, villainous elephant creatures that don't like our boy Poo Poo for some reason. Sometimes they show up out of nowhere and you have to sneak around them. Their only weakness is the pop of a balloon. So you have to sneak around, get the balloon, pop it, and... <coughs> Did they just die? Is Winnie the Pooh a murderer? Is my childhood a lie? And once you finish all the tasks and make it to the character you chose, you get another interesting cutscene. And you just celebrated Feliz Complainos. Happy birthday to you. I found this mode very hard as a kid. I can remember getting frustrated over certain sections and found them very, very difficult. But now it's just one of the easiest things I've ever played. Because I found it hard, I played a lot of junior mode. This mode was intended for younger players, and this game is E-rated, so a 7 year old can play this, and a 97 year old can play this. I wouldn't even give junior mode a C rating, so let's just give it F for fetus. This is not hard by all means, just something for your fingers to do for a few minutes. I guess just the fact that you can move a character around on a screen is so fascinating for younger children. Because that's all you do here. You're basically just walking around until you see one of the many shining glowing circles. Walk up to one, press A, and it plays a short... moment. Another thing you can do in this mode, that you can actually do in the main adventure mode as well, is play as some other characters. For the majority of the game, you're playing as Pooh, but in certain sections, you need to play as other characters. So let me go through the three other playable characters in this game. First off, Piglet. There aren't really any differences from his controls to Pooh's, so there's really no reason for Piglet to be playable in this game. Now Tigger on the other hand is slow and sneaky. He's used to sneak around and be quiet to avoid things. I can't say the same for Eeyore. How do we make it a press stuffed donkey control in a children's video game? Do anything to his tail and watch him go. So Eeyore panics and is real fast and will not stop running. Each of these characters are only used for a couple minutes, and then we're switched back to our good old buddy Feces. And the last mode in this game is multiplayer minigames. Here are just some simple minigames for you, and if you have any, your friends. They're not on a Mario Party level, not even close, but they're not bad. For example, Catch the Honey Pot. In these minigames, you get to choose from a selection of characters. But for this one, you can choose the honey pot. So how do you play catch the honey pot? You catch the honey pot. One player controls the honey pot while the others try and catch them by chasing them. I specifically remember playing this one when I was younger with my cousins, and oh what fun we had. So yeah, the mini games are just fun little tiny quick things to again get your fingers moving. And um that's Winnie the Pooh's Rumbly Tumbly Adventure. For a children's game from the mid 2000s, it's alright. For its intended audience, this is a completely fine game. But coming from a guy who's played Udraw Studio Instant Artist, yeah, this game could have been better. And the last game is. No. 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 I. I can't. I, I, I'm not ready. I need to take a break for now. <laughs> oh, look, it's 4 or 4 p.m. My nap time. What a coincidence. I'll get back to you one day. It's not ready yet. I need to get out of here.